Know and keep these commandments when playing to jam tracks. So friends, if you're playing to jam tracks, I have five commandments, if you will. Five things that are really going to make you sound much better. Without these, it's going to be a little bit hard to play, all right? So if you've played to jam tracks before and you're like, man, whatever I play just doesn't sound good, this is what I want you to do. I want you to think about these five things. I promise you it's going to help out a ton, okay? So number one is know thy key, all right? Thou shalt not go outside of the key. The key is king. If you don't know the key of a song, it's going to be very difficult to play. Some people say, oh, well, you can play by ear and you can just go ahead and do whatever you want. No, that's not true. Uh, playing by ear has to do with understanding music theory or shapes or what have you on the fretboard. But you got to know what your key is. There's no one that's playing by ear that doesn't have some basic understanding of what the key is or what the tonal center is, okay? The tonal center determines what notes you're going to rest on, the tonic, and oftentimes, well, it's always going to determine what the center is, but also from there you can determine whether it's major or minor. This is done pretty quickly, usually, um, if you've got a you know, if, if you've been experienced with music in some way, all right? So you do not ever go outside the key. If we're having a conversation about a particular something, you going outside the key is, if we're in the middle of a conversation, you start talking about something completely different, having nothing to do with what it is that we're talking about, and that's strange, okay? That's number one. Number two is know thy chords. Thou shalt always suggest what chord you're on. So what do I mean by this? Well. The link that's in the description of this video is going to give you a free visual jam track uh, that I want you to take advantage of. And what I mean by visual jam track is it shows the chord as it's going by. Now why is that important? Well, if you know anything about soloing and anything about uh, music theory, when we're having a conversation, just like I mentioned, if we're having a conversation, we're going to stay on subject. We're going to stay right on whatever that moment is that we're talking about. If we're talking about, it doesn't matter what it is, we have the broad subject of whatever it is we're talking about and then the specific thing, okay? We're talking about this thing of this particular thing right now. Now, if you understand the key, that's the broad subject, but then the chord would be the specific thing that we're talking about that subject. And a great guitar player is going to be listening across to whatever chord it is and playing something around that chord, either an arpeggio or some lick that fits into that chord. Now you may not realize this, but this is what great guitar players do, and the ones that you love the most that are really sticking to the song and, and seem to be just expressing themselves so well are truly working around and playing around that chord. Now what does that mean? That means you need to take that chord shape and play some sort of lick around that. We're not going to get into the weeds with that right now, but very important. I tell you, one thing that you can do, especially with this uh, visual jam track that I'm giving you, is when you see the chord coming by, the letter name of the chord, play that specific note the most or settle on that note. When you're playing your phrase, settle on that note or start your phrase off on that note takes a little getting used to, but I have plenty of videos to assist with this, okay? So, know thy chords. Number three, thou shall not put the scale before the phrase, okay? So, what I mean by this is scales are there to assist you, right? Just like a good commandment is, it's there to assist you, to make your life better, not to take away. So, Scales are there to assist you to say, hey, this is the key that we're in. This is the, you know, we're either in major or minor, or this is the chord structure that's happening behind it. This is what you, you, should, you should play or the areas that you could play. That's all scales are. Is it, it's just a series of notes. And for the purposes of playing guitar, it's a series of notes that allows us, you know, what is safe, what's permissible, if you will. Now, it's not a hard, fast rule, but for the most part, those are the notes that are going to sound best. That being said, when a certain chord is played in a certain key, we don't just sail through the scale because it's going to sound like it. it's going to sound like we're just playing a scale over top of the chord. And a lot of times, 
that's what guitar players do in the beginning. They're like, well, I know I can play the A blues scale over this, so why wouldn't I just play the A blues scale? Well, because it's gonna sound like you're just playing the A blues scale. So scales are there to assist. If you start thinking, phrasing, speaking, when I'm speaking, I'm not just going through a bunch of words, speaking monotonously like this without any sort of punctuation, that would get very tiring. We speak in phrases, we speak with emphasis, we have commas, periods, exclamation points, that sort of thing. That's the way you should be playing. You should be playing in phrases, and that means breathing. So a horn player is going to breathe. Guitar players, you need to breathe as well. You say your thing, you rest. You let it sit out there a minute. Maybe you repeat it, but nonetheless, start thinking in phrasing. It's going to make all the difference in the world. Number four, thou shalt know other places on the guitar neck to play. You should know other forms. Why is that? Well, because the, the structure of the guitar, the tuning of the guitar, means that even though you have the same scale that has the same sets of notes in it, you know, no, no different notes, most of the time we're talking about seven notes, even though that's true and you can play all over the guitar neck, the cool thing about the guitar is when you take a scale and you move it to another section of the neck, it changes the fingering of lots of different things. And so because of that, you're going to play differently. Different phrases are going to come out. So what I suggest to my students is get really familiar with soloing and working with jam tracks with one position, one form. Get really, really good at that so you truly understand it. But don't get stuck there because if so, you're only going to have so many licks that you can pull out of that specific portion of the neck. And as you'll find out, if you go to another portion of the neck and you start noodling there, yes, it's a little bit of a learning curve because it's newer, right? But you're going to have a plethora of new licks that are going to come out of that section that you wouldn't have gotten out of the other section. So make sure you have other places on the guitar neck that you can solo with. Number five is know thy feel of the track. So what do I mean by this? Well, in the same way that we're having a conversation, psychologists talk about this all the time. They talk about mirroring. If you're in an interview and the person across from you crosses their legs, you don't necessarily need to cross your legs immediately, but holding some position that mirrors them is a great way to create camaraderie. Or if someone leans in as you're having a conversation, if you're wanting to grow close to them and, and build camaraderie, you would lean closer to them, okay? So same thing is true when we're talking about music. We talk about this conversation. If, if everybody in the band is gelling and sounding really great and the drummer's just going off super loud and everybody else is playing at a level five and he's playing at a level 10, it's gonna throw the whole thing off and upset the whole apple cart, okay? So him bringing that level down to a five is gonna make more sense. Also, if that drummer is a heavy metal drummer and only knows heavy metal and we're playing a reggae song and he's playing a straight up double double bass, hard hi-hat type of beat in the middle of a reggae tune, it's gonna show, it's not gonna sound good. So we need to know the feel of the song. And a lot of times that can just come by just being aware, taking a temp of the room, as I tell my kid all the time, gotta take a temp of the room. So we're listening across, you've got the key, you've got the chords, you're playing in phrases, the whole nine yards. But now what is the vibe? Is it kind of mellow sounding? Is it driven or is, it, is everybody playing just top, top notch volume? Is it aggressive? Is it chilled out? Is it reggae sounding? Is it blues sounding? Is it rock sounding? Is it jazz sounding? Because all of those things are gonna determine how you're going to phrase and what it is that you're going to do. Is it busy? If it's really busy, you might decide not to play busy, maybe to hold back because there's so much busyness going on. Maybe if it's really chilled out, it's a time to get a little busy on the guitar so you can really you know, jump out of the set. Other times you might want to just literally play along with the rest of the band, with the ensemble, usually that's what you're gonna do, in order to fit in. That, my friends, is my five commandments for playing to jam tracks. If you click on that link below, I'm giving you access to uh, The Thrill Is Gone, a jam track that's inspired by that song, The Thrill Is Gone, a visual jam track, so you see the chords going by, so you'll literally be able to do everything that I talked about in the commandments here, following the chords and the whole nine yards. I'm here to help you with all of your guitar needs, my friend. 
please let me know how I can help you. Leave your comments below, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm passionate about your success. I'll see you in another video.